Hello and welcome to a quick introduction of the Clear Jelly Jedox Web environment. To get started with Jedox Web, you can either log in from the Clear Jelly console by just logging on with your email address and password or your social media logon. And then we assume you have um, already gone through the process, authorized your accounting system, and you've created your model. So the model is already in place. Once the model is in place, you can now immediately access it from any web browser by going to this URL that you can also start directly from the console. The URL depends um, on the accounting system. For SASU, it's jedoxsasu.clearjelly.net. For zero, it's app.clearjelly.net. But yeah, this varies depending on the web browser. The best thing is when you initially get started, just start from the Clear Jelly console. So when you've clicked on that link, a new window will open with the details of the Clear Jelly Jedex web environment. Here again, use your normal Clear Jelly email and password. And now this will bring you to the Clear Jelly web environment. Depending on your user rights, you will here see more or less in, um, tabs. Um, the most important one and typically you get started with is the file manager. The file manager section is a section to um, design uh, and start um, your Clear Jelly reports. And it works in a very similar fashion um, as a spreadsheet. So initially you will see here um, a folder for your company and it's typically empty when you get started. And to start a new report, you can just click now here on new, so new spreadsheet. And the spreadsheet here is very similar to an Excel spreadsheet or to a Google web spreadsheet, um, which gives you all the same um, functionality as uh, in these software solutions. So you just specify a name, let's call it for example, clear jelly. And then just open this report. And as you will see, the environment is now um, yeah, very similar to a spreadsheet solution. So you've got your menus here, you've got a few um, symbols here for um, formatting and other solutions. And the principle, it works um, yeah, in exactly the same way as a spreadsheet. So to start a report, the easiest way is to go to Jedox Paste View, which allows you to create a view. Then you will see your Clear Jelly um, environment. In my case here, I've got multiple ones based on, on different accounting systems. So let's here use um, the SASU version. Um, typically, you have at least two models, GL and Sales. Depending on your setup and on your accounting solution, there could be more, like for example, for inventory and other areas. So you just choose the model that you want to work with. Let's say, for example, Sales, and then you get the relevant dimensions or the uh, details that you can work with. And then the next step is very similar to a pivot table. You just drag and drop the item or the detail that you want to see in the report. For example, if you want to see a report showing products by periods, we can just drag those two and then just click here on paste. And this will create an initial simple um, report showing products and periods. So now we see the report here. And then we have all the typical functionalities that are also in the Excel integration um, available here at our disposal. So we can just double click here for a drill down or we've drilled down to a product level and depending on the structure, this could be more or less. So there could be more groupings and the same works for periods. So if you want to drill down to periods, we see quarters initially and then down to the month. This um, view, you can now uh, easily edit in exactly the way you need it. For example, if you click on edit view here now, you could now specify that you just want to see, for example, particular periods of so potentially, let's say, for example, only the first quarter. To do this, you just select the starting point, hold the shift key and select the end point. That's one option. Or you can also, if you want to select um, elements that are not next to each other, hold down the control key and select the ones that you want to use and then just use the arrow here to put them in your report. So at the moment we 
create a report that shows the uh, quarter one, four, and two. If we like, um, we can also change that, um, change the order here. Um, it is just important here, if you want to do this, that you switch to a uh, non-hierarchy view. This can be done here. And then when you're in non-hierarchy view, you can change the order. So you can just, for example, move the quarter one to the top and then quarter two and quarter four after that. If you want to, if you've got too many quarters here, you can, in the same way as you put them there, put them back. So we can now say we just want to have the quarter two here in our report. And if we refresh the report, click on paste, we now see we only have the first quarter. The drill down is now not available anymore because we've moved away from the from the hierarchy view. But of course, we can easily change this if we go back, go to the dimension, the periods, double click on the choose elements and switch this again, choose the quarter one. At the moment, you can see we are in the hierarchy mode. If we go back, we see now this is now bold, which means it's the hierarchy mode and you can, you can drill down. Um, like this, you can now create the report in exactly the way you need it. So you can nest as many dimensions as you want to. So if you want to show, for example, actual versus budget, we can now add the, uh, what we call the data types dimension, which uh, contains all the scenarios. Click on the, on the title here, choose elements and just select the scenarios that you want to show. So at the moment, we've got quite a few here to just show actual versus budget. You can just select those two again, error to the right. Okay. And paste. And now we see a report that shows both actual and budget. If we drill down, we will see that the actual and budget is inherited. Um, so like this, um, you can exactly create the report that you want. So this is the report elements in rows and columns, but of course you can also change the so-called point of view elements, the filters that filter the content here. So the moment we're looking at the year 2017, if you double click on a filter element, you can just um, select in this case, a different year. For example, if you want to hear uh, 2015, we just switched to 2015 and now we get the 2015 data. The formatting options for this report work now in exactly the same way as on a spreadsheet. So for example, we could say we would like to show a chart here and so we just go to insert chart. Now you can select from a wide variety of chart types, the chart type that you want to use. Let's say for example, initially just a simple um, bar chart. Let's make our workspace a bit bigger as well. So just on the report, we could place this now here. So now we have the report, um, that, sorry, we have the table and the chart. Um, all the other formatting options that you're familiar with from a spreadsheet work here equally. So for example, if you want to use um, conditional formatting, that works as well. So if you specify new rules, if the cell is greater than, and here we just choose now my number. So let's say in this case, if it's greater than 600, we would like to show it in a green background color. So fill green, okay. And now we see all the values that are um, above uh, 600 are shown in green. And of course the condition formatting works in the same way for any other column. Um, all your Excel functions are still available. So if you, for example, would like to show a total here at the bottom you could do that using um, uh, similar functions as you know from your spreadsheet. So just a total function of sum. Just choose your uh, area, stop the brackets, um, and then just copy this function across. And now, of course, you can format in the same way, maybe bold, maybe a different number format as well. So I just have uh, two decimal places here. And now we see um, it's shown the way uh, we've selected. The last thing to do is now to publish this report. And publishing report, uh, before we do this, we should save our report. And just click the Save button here. And now we can just go to File, Quick Publish, and publish this report. So let's say Quick um, let's say clear jelly 
first report. So we have published now this report. And now we can open up the navigation. So, so far we've worked in the file manager where you can edit your reports. The published reports are then available in the report manager. So here you can now navigate uh, between your different reports. You can also use a visualization for the report. So our report is here now. And if we just open this, we can either do this here or we can also just uh, double click here. We see now that our report is available um, with all the functionalities so that the users can still uh, interact and select the particular period, for example. And, and all the um, conditional formatting rules and so on will be applied and then your calculations, but they can't destroy anything anymore. So they can't edit the structure of the report anymore. So the, the, the structure here is, is now fixed and protected, but they can interact uh, as they typically should um, on the elements. So they can still do uh, the, the drill up and drill down uh, in rows and columns. They can select the point of view element, but that is it. They can't destroy the structure of the report or the content of the report. In this case, it's completely locked on. Um, if you want users to write back, you can do this um, as well and enable this. Um, you just have to go back to your report, specify the area that you would like to uh, enable for write back. For example, um, this one, so this budget column. Now we can format the cells and take off the protection, so by default it's locked. So if we take the protection off, save the report, um, publish it again. And of course we can use the same name. And now if we go back to our report, Actually, um, I created a new one, a new copy. We will see that there's not this little uh, triangle at the left-hand corner. And here we can also write back or the users can write back. That, of course, depends on their user rights. So if they don't have rights to write back, then even if the report is right enabled, this wouldn't help them. But if we want to add some data here now, for example, um, on an aggregation for this product and all contacts, all payment types, we could just say we want to do normal splashing. We want to have an absolute value of 3000 here. And so you've got the option now to choose different distribution types. At the moment, we just go up with the default one. And now we see we have entered this value back into the database. But we will discuss the write back options in a separate video. So if you're interested in write back, please um, watch the video about the write back options. So this concludes um, an, an initial quick demonstration of how to get started with JEDEX Web. Please um, try out, um, play with your clear jelly model. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact our support team. Thank you very much.